Hello everyone, my name is Halvi. In this video, I'll be explaining the lore of the continent Tellius. Tellius is the continent that the Fire Emblem games of Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn take place upon. Tellius is in a world separate from all other Fire Emblem continents. Tellius is home to two races of people, the Bjork and the Lagoos. The Bjork are basically human, they have no special abilities. Lagoos on the other hand are beast people who have the ability to transform from a human form into an animal one. When untransformed they still have animal-like physical traits such as tails, wings, and pointy ears. On average, they are physically stronger than Bjork, and they have longer lifespans. There is also another special race called the Branded, who are the children born of one Bjork parents and one Lagoos parents. They bear a special brand, otherwise they look just like normal Bjork. They lack the Lagoos' ability to transform, and instead many are blessed with more magical power or superhuman strength. They age much slower than Bjork and have have longer lives like the Lagoos. The brand can still surface on an individual even if their parents are both Bjork as long as it can be traced back in the individual's family tree that a Bjork and Lagoos reproduce together. The brand can appear on any of their descendants. The branded are persecuted by most Bjork and the Lagoos just straight up don't acknowledge their existence and call them parentless. There are three nations ruled by the Bjork. Benyon is the largest and oldest Bjork nation on Tellius. It is ruled by an empress and several senators. The empress is also called the Apostle and is said to be able to hear the goddess Asherah's voice. Its people highly value social status. The upper class live lives of luxury and all the way at the bottom of the ladder are the Lagoos who are hated by commoners and nobles alike. Also many Lagoos are kept as slaves in secret. The senators are corrupt, they hold Lagoos slaves, and constantly compete with each other over who has the most prestige and influence. Crimea is ruled by a king or queen. This ruler is also supported by a committee of nobles who act as senators. It is a peaceful nation that is devoted to building closer ties to the Lagoos nations. This is reflected more by the upper classes than the commoners who still hold resentment towards Lagoos. Dayan is also ruled by a king or queen. It was founded upon beliefs of prejudice towards Lagoos, and these beliefs are drilled into Dayan school children from a young age. They are taught and led to believe that Lagoos attack Bjork without mercy and are merely savage animals. However, there are some citizens that openly reject these racist ideals. There are five nations ruled by the Lagoos. Most Lagoos nations follow a strength-based hierarchy system where anyone can hold a position of power as long as they are strong enough. Gallia is home to the Cat, Tiger, and Lion Lagoos. It is a peaceful nation ruled by a king and has forged an alliance with its neighbor Crimea. Gallians have very close bonds and see each other as brothers and sisters of one large extended family. Many Galleons harbor no ill will towards Bjork, though there are those that are still bitter from the Bjork's past transgressions. Goldoa is an isolationist nation and is home to the Dragon Lagoos. Goldoans are hostile towards all foreigners and refuse to allow any of them to enter. Phoenixes is home to the Hawk Lagoos. They have also taken the surviving Heron nobility into their care. There are are not many hawks and they have a strong grudge towards the Raven Lagoos. They also dislike Bjork and frequently raid Benyon ships. Other than that, they don't make much contact with the outside world. Kilvas is home to the Raven Lagoos. At some point in its history, a plague swept across the nation and killed thousands of its citizens. This plague was actually the work of a blood contract that was broken. Currently, it is a poor nation, and many ravens act as pirates and raid any ship that comes their way. Atari is a long-lost nation and home to the Wolf Lagoos. It is separated from the rest of the world by the Desert of Death, and so throughout much of history, it has been isolated from the affairs of other nations. In Atari, Bjork, Lagoos, and Branded all live together in peace. There is also the Serenest Forest, situated within Benyon. It was home to the Heron Lagoos, however, it got burned down to the ground and its people were almost entirely wiped out, an event known as the Serenest Massacre.
In the beginning, there was only water until one day the goddess Ashunera appeared. She created the land, then she made trees and flowers, then finally creatures, such as fish, beasts, and birds. At first, Ashunera was excited by her new world. Later though, she started feeling lonely because everything she created was different from her and that there was no one who could truly understand her. All alone, she grew sadder and sadder and cried for thousands of years until some creatures began to grow and change, becoming more clever and sophisticated. They tried to comfort Ashunera and eventually grew closer to her. These creatures became the Zunanma, the ancestors of the Bjork and Lagoos. They began to worship Ashunera as a goddess and in reference to the color of her hair, called her the Goddess of Dawn. Then out of love, Ashunera bestowed upon the Zunanma more knowledge and ideas. This caused the Zunanma to rapidly increase in number, giving rise to a variety of races and tribes across the land. Naturally, each of these races thought their own was superior to the others, and conflict arose between them. Conflict gave rise to hate and anger, and this only caused the conflicts to grow larger in scale. As Shunera tried to stop the fighting, she gave them different names, Lagoos and Bjork, but this only made matters worse. The fighting became too much for her to handle, and she let her emotions run wild, losing control over her powers, and caused the Great Flood. A a terrible disaster that flooded the world, killed countless Bjork and Lagoos, and left Tellius as the only remaining landmass. Heartbroken, Ashunera split herself into two separate entities, Ashra, the goddess of order and intelligence, and Yune, the goddess of chaos and emotion. Yune, still unable to control her emotions, could not be left unchecked. Ashra believed that if she were to become a goddess that could properly guide and protect her people and become perfect, then Yune cannot exist. And so she called upon three heroes to eliminate Yune. These heroes were Altina, a Bjork who dual wielded Ragno and Alondite, and later became the first queen of Benyon and mother of the first Branded. So on, the lion, warrior who later became the second king of Benyon, and Degincia, the black dragon king who later ruled over Goldoa. They defeated Yune and convinced Ashura to allow Yune to be imprisoned in a medallion that would later be known as the Fire Emblem and entrusted to Laron's care. Laron is a member of the Heron clan, the representative of the bird tribes to Ashura, and later became the father of the first Branded. The three heroes and Laron did not wish for Yune's erasure, and so they promised to Ashura that Bjork and Laguz would not war for 1,000 years in in this promise, Ashura and Yune would enter a deep slumber, then upon their reawakening, if Bjork and Laguz continue to war with each other, Ashura will cast down her judgments upon them and turn them to stone or erase them from the world as punishment for their sins. If they awake to a world of peace and order, Ashura will reward her people and allow Yune to return to her and become Ashunera once again. Yune agreed to be sealed within the medallion on the promise that Laron will sing to her and calm her and keep her company so she doesn't feel alone while she sleeps. There was one more condition that should Yune and Ashura be awakened early through the Galder of Release, they will listen to the people's plight and then consult with each other and judge their people fairly and impartially. But Yune could also be awakened early from the chaos of war and should that happen, Ashura will awaken as well and punish the people by erasing them from the world. Degincia then came up with the idea to spread legends of a dark god contained within the Fire Emblem to discourage his fellow Lagoos kings from warring with Bjork. Ashura entered her sleep at the top of the Tower of Guidance in Benyon and was worshipped as a kind and loving goddess by the people of Benyon and other lands. The medallion remained in the possession of the Heron royalty of the Serenes Forest for centuries as the Heron are known as avatars of order and are able to control Yune's emotions within the medallion. Altina of the three heroes went on and founded Benyon. Also at this time, she and Laron had a child, the very first Branded. However, after that child's birth, Laron found himself unable to transform or sing Galder, becoming neither Bjork nor Laguz, and he attempted suicide many times. The three heroes feared that this phenomenon, where a child of mixed Bjork and Laguz blood would lead to the Laguz parent losing their power, would spread throughout the world and cause strife between the 
with Bjork and Laguz, which would go against their promise to Ashura. So to avoid that information from leaking to the public, Leron faked his own death and hid himself away in Goldoa, while Altina took on a new Bjork husband and raised their child as a normal Bjork with her new husband. Years later, Altina's granddaughter, Yoram, predicted the arrival of a great famine, and her prediction was confirmed. Yoram from then on was known and worshipped as the Apostle, the one who could converse with the goddess. Later, in the year zero, in the name of the Apostle, the Senate declared that all of the regions outside of Goldoa were to be ruled by Benyon, and so the Benyon theocracy and empire was established, with the Apostle Meshua, Altina's descendants, as its first empress. Then from the years 160 to 250, the discrimination against the Laguz greatly increased, and the Laguz's hatred of Bjork rule reached its peak. Goldoa continually protested to the Senate about the treatment of the Laguz, but to no avail, and within Benyon there was a Bjork movement to remove the power and property of Laguz. The Senate began to twist the truth of the world when they declared themselves as perfect beings who had been closest to the goddess since ancient times, and they declared that the Zunama were humans and that they themselves were also human. This notion quickly spread across Benyon and was officially accepted. In comparison to themselves, the Laguz were seen to be closer to beasts and were referred to as subhumans. Then in year 320, the Laguz left Benyon in search of new lands. Many of the beast tribe headed for the forest of Gallia, and some of the bird tribes headed for the unknown southern islands. In year 350, the Senate sent troops to eliminate the beast Laguz who went to Gallia. The beast used the forest to their advantage and engaged in guerrilla warfare. After a few years, the remaining Laguz and Benyon started a movement to liberate the enslaved Laguz, and within the Senate, there were those who defended the Laguz and opinions were divided. As a result, Benyon troops were forced to withdraw from Gallia. Then in year 355, Solhot of the Lion Clan was pushed to become the leader of Gallia's beast tribe, and with the support of Goldoa, Gallia was established. Inspired by the formation of Gallia, the bird tribes slowly gathered at the island known as Phoenixes, and their independence steadily rose. Benyon then sent more troops into Gallia. However, the beast tribe once again defended themselves with guerrilla tactics. Taking advantage of the fighting, the bird tribe pushed the hawk holes to become their king, and the island of Phoenixes established their own country. In year 390, the Senate was still divided in two, and the side that wished to find peace with the Laguz became independent and led by the senator Karadok, founded Crimea, and made peace with Gallia. Five years later, Benyon and Gallia signed a peace treaty. Then in year 400, Crimea, Gallia, and Phoenixes were all officially recognized as countries. At the same time, within Benyon, the voices of those who wished to re-evaluate the position of the Laguz steadily rose, and after a few years, the view of Bjork and Laguz equality increased in popularity, leading to the loss of power of those who backed the subhuman view. Those who saw Laguz as subhuman were led by Senator Hengist and left Benyon to form the country of Dayan. Then Dayan wanted to invade Gallia, and so they requested aid from Crimea and Benyon, who both refused. Realizing that they could not defeat Gallia alone, Dayan invaded Crimea. After several years of fighting, both countries saw little point in destroying each other and ended the war. Also at this time, because of the differences between the bird tribes, the ravens left Phoenixes and established their own country on the island of Kilvis. Feeling that their dominance has started to fade, the Benyon Empire invaded Dayan and Kilvis in the goddess's name to restore their control over the continent. After a couple years of fighting, Kilvis immediately surrendered as they refused Phoenix's reinforcements. Dayan, on the other hand, continued to put up a fight, and Crimea soon allied with Dayan to fight back against Benyon. Gallia and Phoenixes joined the war as well, and it continued for numerous decades. Then the citizens of Serenes protested against Benyon's war and established their own independent country. Ultimately, in year 478, the war entered a seemingly never-ending state. Benyon worried about their great losses and decided to find a way to stop the war. Koldoa intervened and peace talks were held. 
Benyon signed a peace treaty with the conditions that they had to return their conquered lands to Dayan and Kilvas and recognize them as official countries. While all of this has been going on, Leron has been watching from Koldoa, where he has been in conflict with the Gincia over how to act on the mistreatment of Laguz. He wants Koldoa to act and save the Laguz from their suffering at Benyon's hands. However, the Gincia does not want to escalate things and risk Yune waking from her slumber. He believes their suffering to be a necessary sacrifice and will not interfere unless it becomes an issue of survival. Leron decides to go to Benyon and seek out a solution on his own. In Benyon he meets with Misaha, the current apostle and empress, and around this time she has declared the Laguz Emancipation Act and with the support of her people, the Senate was forced to release all Laguz slaves within the country, though the Senate and others still continue to secretly hold slaves. Misaha recognized Leron as her ancestor and revealed to him that she, along with every previous apostle, was a branded. She told Leron of her plan to reveal herself as a branded to the world, hoping that it would free the world of prejudice against other branded. Leron, inspired by her courage, intended to return to Goldoa to tell everyone of this new hope. However, before Misaha was able to do this, she was assassinated by the Senate. The Senate then blamed the Herons of Serenes Forest. The people were outraged, and many of them took torches and set the forest on fire. The fire lasted for three days and Herons were almost entirely wiped out. The only survivors were five members of the Heron royal family. Benyon's people soon realized that the Herons were a peaceful race and they could not have possibly killed the apostle and were ridden with guilt. This event only served to widen the gap between Laguz and Bjork. When Leron discovered what had happened to his people, he lost all hope for the world. He decided that people were far beyond salvation and resolved to awaken Ashura prematurely and let her erase humanity from the face of the planet. However, since he lost his powers long ago, he was unable to sing the Galder of Release to awaken the goddesses and so planned to awaken them through a continental war. He took on the identity of Seferin and joined the Benyon Senate and 15 years after the Serenes Massacre, Misaha's granddaughter Sonaki ascended as Empress at just 5 years old. Seferin aided the young Sonaki and as she grew up, trusted Seferin completely and due to that trust, Seferin was made Prime Minister by the Senators and they planned to use Seferin and Sonaki as puppet rulers. Instead, however, Seferin and Sonaki worked in direct opposition of the Senate and fought for the people's rights. Sonaki, though, was not a true apostle as she could not hear the goddess's voice and is not branded. Seferin still continued to work on his plan to wake Ashura and so his attention was turned towards Prince Ashnard of Dayan. Ashnard was ambitious, a fierce warrior, and had an earnest desire to change the world. Seferin noticed this and allowed Ashnard to learn of the goddess sealed inside the medallion. Ashnard was then dead set on releasing her. Also while in Dayan, Seferin discovered Zelgius, a branded serving under Gawain of Dayan's four riders. Zelgius explains his situation of being afraid that others will soon find out that he is branded and is getting desperate, so Seferin convinces him to come to Benyon and serve him in his cause. Ashnard then used a blood pact to kill all of those ahead of him in the line of succession to Dayan's throne and then ultimately killed his father to take the throne and become king. Around this time he also started to search for the fire emblem. He found it and kidnapped the Heron princess Alilia and imprisoned her within the Palmeni temple and tried to force her to release the goddess within. However she was unable to do so and due to being depraved of sunlight and fresh air Lilia got sick and died but before she died she was able to give the fire emblem to the priestess Elena, who was able to hold the fire emblem without being corrupted as she had a pure heart with a good balance of chaos and order. With the fire emblem and the lyrics for the Galder of Release, Elena left with her husband Grail, formerly Gawain, and went into hiding and eventually they ended up in Gallia where their children Ike and Mist were born. They lived there happily until one day Grail made the mistake of touching the medallion causing him to go berserk. Elena was able to grab the medallion from him and calm him down. However, However, she was killed by Grail in the process. Ike witnessed the entire event and was left in a state of shock. Seferin and Zelgius happened to be in the neighborhood and stumbled upon Elena and Grail lying on the ground. They bring Grail inside and lay Elena to rest. Mist takes the medallion and much like her mother, possesses a pure and balanced heart and is not affected by its chaotic energies. Seferin decides to leave it in her care for the time being. Ike was still in shock, unable to move, so Seferin wipes the event from Ike's memory 
so he could live on without such a burden. Grail then moves to Crimea and starts the Grail mercenaries. Seferin sent Zogius as the Black Knight to Ashnard to keep an eye on him. The Black Knight quickly gained Ashnard's trust due to his tremendous strength. Ashnard was still interested in the medallion, so he began an invasion of Crimea. With the suddenness of the invasion, Crimea is unable to defend itself and is quickly taken over. Alincia is the sole survivor of the royal family as her parents are killed, and her uncle Renning was taken and transformed into Bertram of Dan's four riders. Meanwhile, the Grail mercenaries are still taking jobs in Crimea until they discover Alincia unconscious in a forest. They agree to help her and escort her to Gallia. Elsewhere, Seferin has ordered the Black Knight to take the medallion from Grail and return it to Ashnard. So while the Grail mercenaries are on the way to Gallia, the Black Knight appears and challenges Grail to a duel and kills him, but does not get the medallion as Gallia's king can be heard in the distance and the Black Knight does not want to mess with him. Ike then takes over command of the Grail mercenaries and leads them across Crimea helping to liberate the country from Dayan. They travel to Benyon and gain Sonaki's support after helping her dismantle Benyon's underground slave trade. Ike is then chosen to lead the newly formed Crimean Liberation Army. He invades Dayan and wins battle after battle and even taking the capital. Ashnard, however, has been staying in Crimea's capital, so Ike continues to lead his forces into Crimea, taking down many of Dayan's most powerful generals. Ike has also kept Ragnell since his father's death and eventually uses it in a duel against the Black Knight and defeats him. The castle, which they fought, crumbles. Ike escapes, and the Black Knight was believed to be dead, but he survived and went back to his identity as Zelgius. Eventually, Ike and his army arrive in Crimea's capital and confront Ashnard, who has managed to reclaim the medallion. Ashnard takes hold of the medallion and gains godlike power, but even that is not enough as Ike is able to kill the Mad King and end the war. Alincia is crowned the Queen of Crimea, and Ike returns to the life of a mercenary. For three years after the Mad King's War, Dayan was now run by the Benyon Occupation Army, who were meant to restore order to the nation. However, due to the corrupt Senate, much of Dayan's citizenry was oppressed by the Occupation Army. This led to the formation of the Dawn Brigade, with Micaiah, the silver-haired maiden, as their leader. Micaiah was a fortune teller who had the gift of foresight. She is Benyon nobility and is Sonaki's older sister. She is branded and can hear the voice of the goddess Yune. Her special powers come from her brand. Yune had taken the form of a bird and accompanied Micaiah everywhere she went. Micaiah was believed to be assassinated alongside her grandmother Misaha. However, she somehow survived and ended up in Dayan. Micaiah and the Dawn Brigade act as freedom fighters and actively oppose the occupation army. They eventually travel to the eastern deserts and join forces with Peleus, who claims to be Ashnard's long lost son and heir to the Dayan throne. Micaiah was appointed the leader of the Dayan Liberation Army and won battles at various key locations across Dayan and is soon able to liberate the capital. At this time, Sonaki has learned of what has been happening and orders Benyon's troops to stand down. The senators abandon Jared, the leader of the Occupation Army, and frame him for all of their crimes. Jared, seeing no way out of this, decides that if he is going down, then the best he can do is take vengeance on Micaiah and take her down with him. He plans to assassinate her in the dead of night, but before he can, the Black Knight appears and saves Micaiah's life. Then with the Black Knight's help, Micaiah marches into Dayan Keep and kills Jared, liberating Dayan. Peleus is crowned king and is tricked into signing a blood pact with Lacan by his trusted advisor Izuka, who has been working with the Senate this whole time. Peleus is not actually Ashnard's son. He was an orphan that Izuka found and used as a pawn in Seferin's plot to wake the goddesses. Izuka and the Black Knight then disappeared and Micaiah was left as Dayan's general. Elsewhere, Alincia is under distress from a rebellion led by Duke Ludvek 
of Felire. Valencia stands her ground and fights back against Ludvec, and even when he threatens to execute Lucia, Valencia does not back down. Then, as Lucia is about to be hanged, the Grail mercenaries come to her rescue and quickly rout the remaining rebels. Ike and his mercenaries were hired by Bastion, who had learned of Ludvec's plans before he left to investigate the events in Dayan. Then, Raphael and Nyla arrive in Gallia and reveal that the senators were behind the Serenus massacre. This new information leads to the formation of the Laguz Alliance, consisting of Gallia, Phoenixes, and Kilvas, who aim to go to war with Benyon. Ike and the Grail mercenaries support the Laguz and enter the war. Dayan then enters the war on Benyon's side due to the terms of the blood contract. Crimea remains neutral in this war at this time. Sometime during the war, Sonaki and Seferin are imprisoned, and the Senate seizes control. This does not last for very long before they are freed. Benyon's army is then split between those who are loyal to Sonaki and those who are loyal to the Senate. The half under Sonaki's control joins forces with Gallia, Phoenixes, and Crimea, and Sonaki appoints Ike as general. At this point, Sonaki's army and Dayan's army, led by Micaiah, clash multiple times, and in Benyon, Seferin, and Zelgius start a rebellion, encouraging many of its citizens to side with Sonaki instead of the Senate, putting things in a state of chaos. All of this chaos causes the medallion to grow more and more unstable, leaving both of its caretakers, Grayson and Leanne, unconscious. Following Yune's voice that she must be awakened through the Galder of Release and not the chaos of war, Mist, Sonaki, and Micaiah all gather around the medallion. After Sonaki fails to sing the Galder correctly, Micaiah takes over and sings the correct lyrics that until that point were unheard of. Micaiah knew the lyrics from deep within, as if they were always a part of her. Yune and Ashura have awakened, and without consulting with Yune, Ashura cast down her judgments and turned almost everyone on the continent to stone. Ike and many others with a strong spirit were fine though, and Yune organized them into three armies and tells them to travel to the Tower of Guidance, where they will find Ashura. Lacane was also safe, and he formed his own army, called the Disciples of Order, to fight against Yune's forces. The armies eventually make it to the tower, where they first defeat Lacane and rip up the Blood Pact, freeing Dayan's people. Nesala also destroys a Blood Pact that he was bound to, thus freeing his own people. Then Ike has one final duel with the Black Knight and kills him, avenging his father's death. In the end, Zelgius felt gratitude towards Ike as he felt he was fighting Gawain in his glory days. Next, they defeated the Gintia, who had decided to accept Ashura's judgment. Seferin was next to be defeated as he revealed to everyone that he was the mastermind behind the previous wars and unleashing Ashura's judgment. He also must be killed to unlock the seal on the doorway to Ashura. Micaiah, however, is able to use her healing powers to revive Seferin and time it just right that the doorway still unlocks. Ike then convinces him to fight with them against Ashura to rectify his mistakes. Then in the final battle with Ashura, Micaiah channels Yune's power and transfers it to Ike, who uses it in one last strike to defeat Ashura. Yune then soars over the lands and restores those who have been turned to stone. Peace is restored between all nations. Micaiah becomes Queen of Dayan as she considers it her true home. Sonaki continues as Benyon's Empress. Alincia remains Queen of Crimea. Ike left on a journey to lands unknown and was never seen again. 1200 years later, Yune and Ashura eventually fused back into Ashenera and watched over the world with Leron at her side. And with all that said, this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, and have a great rest of your day.